In today's lecture, we're going to discuss hemopoiesis or hematopoiesis, the production of blood cells, RBCs, WBCs, and even platelets occurs in the bone marrow. And this process is called hemopoiesis. Where does the hemopoiesis take place? The first trimester, hemopoiesis occurs in the yolk sac. In the second trimester, in liver and spleen. In the third trimester, in the central and peripheral skeleton. In adulthood, as I said before, in the bone marrow, the red bone marrow of axial skeleton, vertebral bodies, sternum, ribs, and pelvis. What happens is that the hematopoietic stem cells present in yolk sac migrate to other places like liver, spleen, and bone marrow. So around the third month of embryo, the liver gets populated with these stem cells and become a major organ for hemopoiesis. This is called dominant migration. Whereas some hematopoietic stem cells migrate to lymph nodes, spleen, and this is called minor migration. At the time of fourth month of fetal life, hemopoiesis takes place in the bone marrow. Bone marrow is permanent residence for these stem cells. At the time of birth, all hematopoietic stem cells are limited to the bone marrow and the bone marrow will be active. Active bone marrow is called the red bone marrow and inactive bone marrow is the yellow bone marrow. So the red bone marrow becomes the primary site of hemopoiesis and continues as the source of blood cells after birth and throughout life. Yellow bone marrow is accumulated with fat cells. So it is yellow in color and red bone marrow is highly vascular and rich in hematopoietic stem cells. In this figure, you can clearly see the difference between the red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow. What is extramedullary hematopoiesis? In newborn, if hemopoiesis is going on outside of bone marrow, that is liver, spleen, and lymph nodes, it is called extramedullary hemopoiesis. As an individual grows and in adulthood, the rate of blood cell formation decreases. The red bone marrow in the medullary cavity of long bones becomes inactive and is replaced by yellow bone marrow, which is largely fat cells. If there is need for excessive hematopoietic activity, such as in the case of severe bleeding, a low bone marrow has a capacity to be reactivated and converted into red bone marrow. About 0.05 to 0.1% of red bone marrow cells are derived from mesenchyme and are called pluripotent stem cells or hemocytoblasts. Now let's discuss in detail about what happens inside the red bone marrow or the cellular pathway of hemopoiesis. This is an outline of what all kinds of cells are present. First is stem cells, which has two types, totipotential and multipotential. Second, progenitor cells. Third, precursor cells. Fourth, effector cells. In order to form blood cells, the pluripotent stem cells derive from totipotential cells. It produces two types of cells, which are the myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. Lymphoid stem cells can give rise to the so-called lymphoproliferative malignancies such as acute lymphocytic leukemia. Normally, they give rise to all categories of mature lymphocytes, whereas myeloid stem cell can give rise to myeloproliferative malignancies such as acute myeloid leukemia. 
Normally, my rice to red blood cells, granulocytes, platelets and monocytes. Next is progenitor cells, which are derived from multipotential stem cells. During hemoid hemopiasis, some of the myeloid stem cells differentiate into progenitor cells. Other myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells develop directly into precursor cells. Some progenitor cells are known as colony forming units, CFUs in the abbreviated form. For example, CFUE ultimately produce erythrocytes or RBCs. CFUMEG produce megakaryocytes, which is a source of platelets, and CFUGM ultimately produce granulocytes. The next is precursor cells, which are the blasts and their progeny. Erythroblasts develop into red blood cells, myeloblasts into granulocytes, monoblasts, monocytes, lymphoblasts, lymphocytes, megakaryoblasts, platelets. So the last one is mature effector cells, which we have already discussed, the red blood cells carry oxygen, carbon dioxide, and has a lifespan of 120 days. Neutrophils for phagocytosis killing. Monocytosis for phagocytosis killing and antigen presentation. Whereas lymphocytes express cells as self or non-self. Platelets, hemostasis. So in this figure, you can see that the pluripotent stem cell divides itself into myeloid stem cell and lymphoid stem cell, which is common for the origin of the remaining progenitors and precursor cells. Let's take a look at this. Myeloid stem cell give rise to CFUE, which is a progenitor cell, pro-erythroblastis formed and reticular site from that RBC is formed or erythrocyte. CFU-MEG, which is for megakaryoblast. From that, megakaryocytes will form, which will in turn give platelets, which are these tiny little dots there. Myeloid stem cell also gives rise to eosinophilic myeloblast, which forms eosinophil, and basophilic myeloblast basophil, also CFUGM, which is for granulocytes. So CFUGM, the progenitor cell, give rise to two precursor cells, that is myeloblast and monoblast, which in turn give rise to neutrophil and monocyte respectively. And monocyte in turn matures into a macrophage now, lymphoid stem cell give rise to NK lymphoblast and small lymphocytes, which include T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte, which are in turn originated from the T lymphoblast and B lymphoblast. B lymphocytes further give rise to the plasma cell. So, out of these form cells, the eosinophil, basophil, neutrophil, or granular leukocytes or WBCs, which are granular. Then monocyte, T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, and NK cell, all are agranular leukocytes. So NK cell is the natural killer cell, which is originated from the NK lymphoblast. Now these formed cells circulate in the blood and do their functions.